Uh, good morning and happy Sunday to all. This is a beautiful day to give thanks. So let's do that right now in song. Sometimes I forget to stop and thank the day To sing off key or dance in the rain Then the smallest gift makes me realize How great it is just to be alive I give thanks for everything I am Even what I change if I had the chance I give thanks for everyone I know and all the gifts they have to show I give thanks Life just seems to pass me by Something happens to catch my eye Then I stop and take the time to thank the sun just because it shines I give thanks for everything I am even what I change if I had the chance I give thanks for everyone I know and all the gifts they have to show I give thanks so So stop and think of all you have to give and all the life that's given you today. Take a look around, miracles abound. To have them all you have to do is say, I give thanks for everything I am, even what I change. If I have the chance, I give thanks for everyone I know and all the gifts they have to show I give thanks 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 And we give thanks to our music team. Thank you so much. I, I love that song, yes? What a, what a great opportunity to start our day with gratitude and give thanks. Do we thank that sun just for shining? Hmm. Well, it's a beautiful, sunshiny day out there today. So let us indeed give thanks. And welcome everyone to Unity of Daytona Beach, a positive path for spiritual living. We are so grateful that you have chosen to be here with us this morning. And today's daily word that I am using is from February 17th, entitled Lent. I begin my Lenten journey and welcome a new way of thinking and being. I give thanks for this holy season, a time of deep, prayerful contemplation. With faith, I commit to deepening my spiritual understanding and more fully expressing my divinity. I solemnly ask, which habits or thought patterns are keeping me from being the person I want to be? I take time in the silence to sit with the question, open to whatever wisdom comes to me. As I consider what to give up, I also think of what I am giving to. I release old thoughts and patterns of behavior and welcome a new way of living. I release negative thinking to give myself the gift of positivity. I make a sacred commitment to the process of allowing the pure expression of my Christ nature to shine brightly through and as me. Today's daily word is inspired from Psalm 37, verse 5. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust in him and he will act. Oh, please join me in a prayer this morning as we gather. What a beautiful time to begin our Lenten journey together, to welcome a new way of thinking and being, to take this time throughout this hour here together this morning 
to make a decision, perhaps about what you would like to give up, but also what you are giving to. What would you like to give to? We are now in the presence of pure being and immersed in the Holy Spirit of life, of love, and wisdom. We acknowledge your presence and your power, O blessed Spirit. And in your divine wisdom, now erase our human limitations and from the pure substance of love, bring into manifestation our world according to your perfect law. And because we allow it and claim it to be so, so it is. Amen. Please join me now as we speak our Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And leave us not in temptation, but deliver us from error. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. I am a radiating center of light Through me only God's light will shine I am a radiating center of light Through me only God will shine Through me only God will shine love will shine. I am a radiating center of love, through me only God will shine. Through me only God will shine. Through me only God will shine. shine. I am a radiating center of peace, through me only God will shine. Through me only God will shine. Through me only God will shine. Through me only God will shine, huh? Let that be our time together. Let, let that be what others see when they see us, yes? Message in the music, thank you. Please join me now in our statement of faith. There is only one presence and one power in the universe and in my life. God the good omnipotence, yes. Let's do gratitude one more time. Thank you, God. Yes, thank you, God. And now we have a, just a couple of announcements this morning. This week will be our second week of our class on Wednesday evenings at 7 o'clock, the Ten Commandments of Self-Esteem, which I mentioned to our group this past week that I, I really wish that book was entitled The Ten Commandments of Self-Care. That's, I think, a better, uh, a better title for the information that we're covering. So if you choose to be with us, be sure that you call the church office or email so that they could let me know and I could send you the link. We're having a good time. And we have our drive-by food drive that's been this entire month. And this coming Saturday will be our last Saturday for this here 
at Unity Church of Daytona Beach. We've had such a fabulous outpouring of generosity from everyone, between everyone who has contributed, all of our worker bees that have been collecting that food for you. And this coming Saturday is a special Saturday because our youth will be out there this week sharing some service with you in this community. So please bring by your non-perishables, your healthy snacks for the children. This has been a fabulous turnout, and I thank you all. I thank, again, our beloved Carol Evans and Nicole Mitchell for ha heading this up for us. It it's been a wonderful experience. So thank you all. I'm quiet, I'm calm, I'm at ease. I'm quiet, I'm calm, I'm at ease. Right here and right now, I'm at peace with myself. I'm quiet, I'm calm. I'm at ease. I'm quiet. I'm calm. I'm at ease. I'm quiet. I'm calm. I'm at ease. Right here and right now, I'm at peace with my friends. I'm quiet, I'm calm, I'm at ease. I'm quiet, I'm calm, I'm at ease. I'm quiet, I'm calm, I'm at ease. Right here and right now, I'm at peace with my world. I'm quiet, I'm calm, I'm at ease. It's a beautiful slide. Let me just take that view in for just a moment. And now if you choose, I invite you to close your eyes. And we'll take this time just to breathe together. To be quiet, calm, and at ease. What a precious gift. What a precious gift with the worldly distractions that like to swirl around out there. That we take this time every Sunday morning to become quiet, calm, and at ease. Just to give that thinking mind a little bit of a rest. So get comfortable right where you are. Settle in. Just allow spirit to have its perfect way with us. There's nothing for us to do. Just to be. Just be. And take a deep breath in. Watch that breath come in. Release. Watch that breath go out. 
and at any time here this morning or even in your own private practice of meditation that mind wants to wander off you just simply bring your attention back to your breath back to your breath and you watch yourself inhale and you watch yourself exhale and each time we take that deep breath and we exhale we go inward a little bit more and we become quiet calm and at ease does that feel like in your body to be at ease at ease maybe our shoulders relax we just send that beautiful life giving breath to any areas in the body that we notice any tension you just breathe right into that and send that life giving breath to that area and then we exhale and we notice a little more quiet a little more calm a little more ease and as we consciously choose to step away from the outer distractions of the world we give ourselves that beautiful gift of listening listening to the guidance of that still small voice within the sweet loving whisper of spirit so we take a deep breath in release that breath a little more quiet a little more calm a little more ease and if you're ready perhaps we ask the question precious spirit what is mine to give up in this Lenten season what is mine to let go of What is mine to release? And what is mine to be giving to? What is mine to be giving to? What renewing? What new way of thinking? What new way of being? we take a breath in we release that breath and we take this into the silence now
And we take another deep breath together. Watch the breath go in and watch that breath go out. And we notice the quiet, the calm, the ease. And we know that this is ours, always available, only but a choice and a thought away. And again, we say, thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. And so it is. Amen. just hear everybody here doing that clapping couldn't you that yes <laughs> all together now all together now who use me God show me that's what we're all here for this morning isn't it absolutely and we're gonna do it through what a mind fast and a soul feast are you ready <laughs> well before we get begin this morning I would just like to invite all of us perhaps if you choose to get, dedicate this time to all of our friends, 
brothers, sisters, family, all of that, in, in all of those areas that have suffered greatly with this storm that went on last week. Certainly Texas has been suffering, we know that. So if you'll join with me here with an intention of energy and see, you know how brightly the sun is shining here this morning, let's send all that love, all that beauty, all that energy, all that warmth, all the love in our hearts to all of those that have been affected by this storm, yes? So we see it. We see everything that they need coming to them. We see them abundant. We know that God is right there in the midst of all, providing that amazing source of all that is. And so it is. Thank you very much. Thank you. So welcome to the Lenten season. Last week was Ash Wednesday, the beginning of Lent. Now, brace yourself, but Ash Wednesday is 46 days before Easter. Friends, that means we're down to 42 now. <laughs> okay, can you believe it? That we're already upon the midst of Easter. Here it is. So are you ready to prepare yourselves, ourselves, this community, and our world for a resurrection? If you're all here, I bet everybody would be going, yes, absolutely. So just say it wherever you are. Yes, absolutely. Bring on the resurrection. <laughs> well, what is this Lenten season all about? Our beloved Unity co-founder Charles Fillmore says this in his book, Keep a True Lent. Lent is a church institution, and there is no authorization for it anywhere in the New Testament. The idea, however has sound spiritual basis. Moses, Elijah, and Jesus himself set a precedent for it. Each observed a 40-day period of prayer and fasting as preparation for spiritual work. So the number 40 is frequently used in scriptures to indicate a completed preparation for something to follow. So when we consider Lent as a well-rounded or completed season of retreat, from the things of the world, for the cleansing of the mind, and the recollection of things of spirit, it becomes a true season of preparation, a preparation for the resurrection of the mind from the darkness of error thinking, doubts, and false beliefs into the light of understanding. I'll take that, how about you? <laughs> Thank you, Charles Fillmore. So indeed, for me in particular, the time of Lent is a special time. It is that time of preparation, a time of releasing and renewing. And Lent is a time of spiritual growth, I believe, a time for a progressive unfoldment. So I invite you this morning to give yourself the gift of placing all doubts, all fear, all worry, all burdens, sadness, lack, into the light, into the light of God, and enter this Lenten season expecting definite results of illumination. Our God, our God that's absolute good, source of all that is, is urging us towards our spiritual evolution only always. <laughs> and we do this by releasing false, limiting beliefs, and claim our power and dominion over the outer conditions of the world. I like that. Are you ready to have a little power and dominion over the outer conditions of the world? Yes, me too. I heard this acronym for Lent, and I like this. The acronym is this. Lent stands for letting go of every negative thought. Letting go of every negative thought. That is the release. And the renewal is the affirming of our truth of oneness. As we're told in scripture, right? The Father and I are one. So today will be a time of exploring what is no longer serving our highest and best and welcome us to a new way of living. Even if you think you've got it going on pretty good, and I believe a lot of us do, there's always more. So it will be a time of a sacred commitment to ourselves and to our spiritual journey. It is a sanctified time of allowing the pure expression of our Christ nature to shine brightly. 
And I have to tell you, as I was preparing for this lesson, and I took that into my consciousness as I was putting it out there, and I thought, to allow our Christ nature to shine brightly. And what I came up with, does anybody ever remember that show, um, Touched by an Angel? And every time she was, she was revealed as the angel, that messenger of God, this magnificent bright light would shine down. Well, that's what came into my mind. So let that light, that amazing Christ light, illuminate us through this time. And what a beautiful opportunity to open ourselves up, to expand our consciousness, to broaden our spiritual awareness, to cultivate and to commit to a time of mind fasting of false beliefs and soul feasting on the truth of our being. Now, all that being said, I must tell you, (laughs) as perhaps many of you might say, that in years past, growing up, my experience of Lent was totally different from anything that Charles Fillmore just described. My concept of Lent growing up in traditional religion was one much more of sacrifice and suffering. And also, I must tell you that further, my interpretation of sacrifice and suffering was that it was good. It was good to do that. And that somehow that demonstrated some greater level of conviction to the practice. These are all my perceptions, all right? Often, too, through that sacrifice and suffering, I was deemed a little more holy in all of that, (laughs) whatever that is, right? And I got to tell you that for where I was at in my stage of spiritual maturity, it was much more an outer experience rather than any sort of an inner understanding. And let me tell you where I was at. Now, I'm thinking about myself back in high school, okay? (laughs) And let me just tell you, back in those that we did not mind talking about Lent, and we didn't mind telling you what it is that we were giving up, as if Somehow it could be a little bit competitive in some way, right? Well, what are you giving up for Lent? Well, well, I don't, well, what are you giving up for Lent, right? (laughs) Or what should I give up for Lent? Am I going to give up meat, sweets, chocolate, ice cream, beverages? Oh, no, 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 no. And don't even let anybody try to offer you any one of those items during Lent. Because it would be as if you had like a bullhorn going, no, please, don't offer me chocolate. I gave it up for Lent. Or, oh, no, don't offer me ice cream. I gave that up for Lent. Are you noticing, my friends, what was going on? The entire focus was on the outer condition. And, of course, I'm using a little bit of humor with all of this. And I mean no disrespect to any of that type of thing, because truly, those types of fasting, I believe, when taking it in deeper, can have a meaning of spirituality as well. But for me at that time, it was just mostly superficial. Today, I believe that many of us try to be a little more disciplined during Lent, giving up something, perhaps, that we really enjoy. And that's fine. That's great. Fasting has always been an important part of the tradition of Lent. But this year, however, I'm just going to invite us to ask us to consider what other things could we possibly think about giving up? Would you like to give up some, maybe you wouldn't like to give it up, but here's a suggestion. (laughs) Give up complaining. Not that any of us Unity folks complain. I'm not saying that, but you know, we know folks, right? So give up complaining, maybe shift over to a focus on gratitude, or give up any bitterness that might be weighing you down, and turn to forgiveness. Give up some worry, trust in God. Give up discouragement, and be full of hope. Be full of hope, even though we're still in this pandemic with all of its restrictions. Give up discouragement. Be full of hope. Give up hatred. Return good for error. Give up anger. Perhaps be more patient. Give up gossiping. Woo, did she say that? Give up gossiping. Make a choice before we speak. 
All of that sounds wonderful, doesn't it? You say, great, sure. How do we do that? Well, the Lenten season in unity offers us a different involvement if we are ready and willing this year. And each year, Unity Worldwide Ministries publishes a Lenten booklet. And this year, it's entitled Release and Renewal. And you can get this as a free download, or you can request a hard copy if you like. You can go to unity.org and find that. And it looks like this, if you haven't already seen that. And it's a wonderful booklet. There's numerous gifts in this booklet, and this morning we're going to take a look at a few of them. And this booklet reminds us that we go through many cycles in our lives all the time. And old ways of being often need to die off and make room for new ones to come in. We see these cycles in nature too, don't we? And we do this through the process of release and renewal. I believe with the use of denials and affirmations. And in unity, we often speak of affirmations and affirmative prayer. But sometimes I think we leave off the importance of the process of the denial. So this morning, we're going to get into a little bit of a metaphysical lesson, if you will. We're going to talk a little bit about denials and affirmations. Because denial and affirmations are two parts of one process of the cleansing and the rebuilding of our consciousness. So we need both, friends. Denial is the ability to let go and release old, outworn negative thoughts, feelings, attitudes, incorrect beliefs. And it's also the ability to refuse or reject. I like this. This says, denial is the great no-no power of the mind. It is to deny the claims of error consciousness. And one of my most favorite denials that is like, you know, when I can't think of something, but this one works for everything I feel, it is this too, fill in the blank, has no power over me. Friends, I'm not saying that we deny any facts of what's going on, but what I am saying is that we deny that it has the power over us. Because remember, we're here claiming our dominion over outer circumstances. That the God in us, the Christ nature of us, is always present, always greater than anything that we are facing. So this too has no power over me. Then we have our affirmation. And the affirmation is the ability to claim, accept, realize the newer, truer, higher, more correct thoughts, feelings, attitudes, and beliefs. It, in turn, is the great yes, yes power of the mind. Affirmations produce those thoughts, feelings, attitudes, and beliefs more closely aligned with divine ideas. To affirm anything is to assert positively that it is so, even in the face even in the face of all contrary evidence. There, my friends, lies our work, doesn't it? Even in the face of contrary evidence. Because again, in that, what are we doing? Again, we're not denying the facts, but we are claiming our dominion over it. We're pulling forth our Christ consciousness and knowing that God is everywhere equally present. Affirmations are much, much more than just positive thinking. Affirmations are a realization. And what is realization? Realization is when we know that we know something is true regardless of outer appearances or circumstances. Realization is the state of inner conviction that involves thinking and feeling of truth. It's, it's our statement of faith, basically, that we say here every Sunday morning. God, the good, omnipotent. This process is what I believe the whole Lenten season is about. And that booklet that Unity excuse me, uses each year is a beautiful demonstration of this. We release and we renew. And this booklet begins with a denial. 
that says, I release any belief in limitation. So during this Lenten season, I set my intention to release any beliefs in limitation. And here's a little bit from that booklet. It says, when such thoughts enter my mind, I quietly affirm that I am happy, whole, wise, and healthy. I have plenty to meet my needs. By consciously letting go of what they said, stinking thinking, I give myself permission to see myself and the whole world around me in divine perfection. Because that's the truth, friends. And after all, it's one of our principles, isn't it? Thoughts held in mind produce after their kind. And that writing in that booklet was inspired from this scripture, Philippians chapter 4, verse 8. This is finally beloved. Whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence and if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. And as I was preparing this, I thought, you know, we've seen that scripture and heard that scripture numerous times. Why do we forget? Why do we forget? Why, why is it sometimes often much more tempting to go to that error belief? Practice, practice, practice. <laughs> yes? <laughs> It's all how that mind works. It's a whole nother lesson. And then it's followed with the affirmation. So in the booklet, it gives you the denial first, making that room, and then in comes the affirmation. And this sharing is from one of my instructors from ministerial school, so it had a little special place in my heart. She actually spoke here several years ago. It's Reverend Sandra Campbell. And her affirmation says, I renew my sense of possibility. And if you look at the word impossible, you might see, I'm possible. And that gives it a whole new meaning. I like that. Instead of impossible, we'll take those first two letters and make it, I'm possible. I'm possible. So if you can think of nothing else, use that. I'm possible, because you certainly are. She says, as a child growing up in the age of television, I enjoyed watching a variety of shows. Among my favorites was Reverend Robert Schuler's Hour of Power on Sunday mornings. I was encouraged by what he called faith and possibility thinking. In his messages, he spoke to the belief that the smallest amount of faith can enable us to overcome the greatest obstacles. Our beliefs have powerful control over our achievements. Our experiences are in direct correlation to how we view ourselves and our world. How are you viewing yourselves, friends? How are you viewing our world? She goes further to say, one of the first stories my mother read to me as a child was The Little Engine That Could. That story also inspired me to keep trying, no matter how difficult or seemingly impossible a situation might be. When I moved beyond my doubts and fears, I was always amazed at what I was able to achieve. In the words of my mother, nothing beats failure but a try. <laughs> I liked that. I also met her mom. Nothing beats failure but a try. As I deny thoughts of lack, limitation, fear, and worry, I renew my sense of possibility and I affirm, I am possible. Thank you, Reverend Sandra. So notice what's occurring in all of these actions, right? Again, first we use a denial to do that house cleaning of the mind, if you will. Anyone remember that movie of Mary Poppins? My daughter used to watch that show or that movie endlessly. And Dick Van Dyke was in it, and he was a chimney sweep. And that is my vision of cleansing the mind as I was working on this. I had this little vision of Dick Van Dyke up there with his little chimney sweep, just sweeping out all of that clutter, all that clutter out of the mind, getting rid of that soot of error beliefs and thinking. 
And once that was completed, then I have this vacant space. And that vacant space is ready to receive and ready to be renewed. So imagine that with me for just a moment. If you have taken the time to do some deep cleaning, what do you do with that space that you've just created? I don't believe that we typically turn right back around and fill it back up with clutter and worn out ideas, worn out things, anything that's no longer serving us, things that we don't want. I don't think we do that. We don't trash it right back up, I don't believe, right? So let us notice that for just a minute and do the very same thing, that very same actions with our thoughts and creatively choose what we allow into our consciousness. Because friends, all of our thoughts are formative. Everything we think forms something. It's either creative or it's destructive. But here's the magnificent news. We have a choice. We have a choice. So let us make those choices with divine wisdom. Okay, now our chimney sweeps have done their jobs, and we've created this beautiful space in our minds and in our consciousness. And now it is time to fill that space. We renew, and we bring in an affirmation. These affirmations are soul feasting. They align with divine ideas. They feed us. You can notice that because you'll notice how you feel. And they establish once again, or maybe perhaps sometimes, for the first time, the truth about our oneness. Reminding us again, the Father and I are one. So we can call forth our power of imagination. We can visualize that truth. And we see an outpicturing into our experiences and our world. It's powerful. That's a little bit of metaphysics once again. And from one of my books called Heart-Centered Metaphysics, some of you may know, there is a process, a three-step process that we can use to demonstrate the good that we desire. And I believe Jeannie has it on a slide for us. And we'll also get the, these posted for us on Facebook as well in case you would like to refer back to them. So what do we do? It's a three-step process. First, we recognize truth as its principle. For example, that we are abundant, right? That's just one example of truth. Truth or all that absolute good that's always present all the time around us. So we have, we recognize it. Then number two, we create an affirmation towards that realization and we hold it in our thoughts and in our consciousness. For example, I am a Christed being and I am abundant. And then we visualize that. We visualize it, putting it all together to anchor it more firmly in our awareness. And then step three is that we have the faith to believe that you have received. Not a blind faith, but an understanding faith that power of faith, that faith that Charles Fillmore says is a deep inner knowing that that which is sought is already ours for the taking. And often here in unity, we will say we claim it, we allow it to be so, and so it is, because that's what we're doing with it. That is the reason we're saying that. So if you're willing, let's just practice for just a minute here this morning. So let's just take a breath and maybe just close your eyes for a minute. And no doubt, through this morning already with everything that we shared, something perhaps has come to your mind. Perhaps it's abundance. Perhaps it's wholeness. Divine love. Peace. Harmony whatever spirit's placed in your heart. So just breathe. Have the realization of that truth.
And as that comes to you, we take this time now to create an affirmation. And it can be very simple, my friends. And I suggest that in all of our affirmations, we start with, I am. Because what's happening in that I am, besides the fact that we're stating it as already done, that it's already true right now, we call forth that Christ nature from within us, that I am consciousness that encompasses all of our 12 powers, all of those spiritual qualities, our spiritual identity. So we call it forth. And it can be, I am, fill in your blank, And perhaps it's peace. So then you visualize that. What does that look like to you? And you make all of those connections through the power of your words, through the power of your mind, through the power of how it feels within your body. And you anchor that into your awareness. So now you know what it looks like in your life. You see it's out picturing. You feel it. You be it. You think it. And hold on to it for just a minute. For just a minute. Take a breath again. Release that breath. And now we move to the third step of that process. And that third step is to have that faith. That faith to know that it is indeed the Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. And dear friends, whatever it is that came to you, let us also not forget that that desire has already been placed in your heart by God. It's just bringing it forth to your awareness. It is yours. So you know it. Don't just believe it, but know it. And that affirmation can even be, I am faith. I am faith. And breathe it. And know what faith feels like. But let's go of all those worries and concern because we know that the Father and I are one. This process, these three steps, seem somewhat simple. My friends, practicing it, it is extremely powerful. And some of you know that already. But I'm inviting us in this Lenten season to step into it in a greater way, to make it a daily practice, not just for this Lenten season, if you choose, but beyond as well. This time of mind fasting from lack and limitation, that is our release. Invest in your spiritual evolution with this time of renewing and soul feasting. My friends, our resurrection is unfolding right here, right now. Receive God's abundant blessings for you, for your life. It's a choice. It is here. It is always available to you. And so it is. Namaste. There is more than enough in a universe that you created. There is more than enough on a planet of sacred design. There is more than enough for humanity made in your image. Why would I worry? Oh, why would I doubt? Oh, why would I ever think I'd go without? Why would I worry? Why would I doubt? Why would I ever think I'd go without? Your infinite love made me, made everything I see, and all that will ever be is your infinite So know the truth, whatever I choose to do, your infinite love will prove more than enough. There is more than enough.
yourself in a universe that you created. There is more than enough on a planet of sacred design. There is more than enough for humanity made in your image. Why would I worry? Why would I doubt? Why would I ever think I go without? Why would I worry? Why would I doubt? Why would I ever think I'd go without? Your infinite love made me, made everything I seen, and all that will ever be is your infinite love. Let the world know the truth, whatever we choose. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to claim that and say, and so it is. Jeannie, for just a moment, would you go back to that slide, why would I worry, why would I doubt? This is part of it, dear friends. Poor Jeannie. She's like, what? What is she asking me to do? At any rate, there it is. Why would I worry? Why would I doubt? Why would I ever think I'd go without? Your infinite love made me, not only made me, as me, through me, in me. That's what's happening here, dear friends. Let's claim it. That's our dominion over every worldly circumstance. Let's own it. Will you own it with me this morning? Yes. Thank you, God. It's that time in our service. We prepare our gifts and our tithes, and you know in whatever way you have already done that, whether you're sending it in, you're mailing it in, you're doing it through PayPal or Vanco, however you're doing that. We thank you so much for your continued support in this ministry. You know, we're almost coming up on a year of this pandemic. You all have continued always, each and every week, to love us, support us, and we are so grateful. So if you'll join me now, please, in affirming our affirmation of abundance with me. Divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I am, all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. Thank you, God, and it is so. It is so. We've claimed it done. And there it is once again, our friends, our wall of love, yes? that living abundantly. Those, again, that's all your support, all your love that you consistently send in, and we are so grateful. We know how blessed we are right here in this community. So from our hearts to your hearts, know that we love you so much, so much. And if you'll join me, please, one more prayer. Let's do that prayer of protection together this morning. With enthusiasm and energy, let's send it out to the entire world this day. Let us be the world changers right here this morning. Yes? Yes. Here we go. Prayer for protection. The light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. The presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is and all is well. All right, music team, take us home with the peace song. Let there be peace on earth and 
and let it begin with me. Let there be peace on earth, the peace that was meant to be. With God, our Creator, we are family. Let us walk with each other in perfect harmony. Let peace begin with me, let this be the moment now. With every step I take, let this be my solemn vow. To take each moment and live each moment in peace eternally. Let there be peace on earth. And let it begin with me.